Hello everyone and welcome back. Today is the second video in the extruder stepper motor series and today is a little bit different because instead of a purely analytical solution we're going to do some experimental testing to give us some numbers to plug into our model. If you'll remember last week I asked the community if anyone had any research or data on how much force was required on the filament to push that filament throughout the hot end at a given flow rate. And someone reached out to me and mentioned, why don't you just experimentally validate your, this yourself? At first, I was thinking that was going to be complicated because we need um, some sort of um, you know, way to measure that force with, say, a strain gauge or something like that. But in reality, um, we have the stepper motor torque estimates. And we can use those estimates to give us a kind of general ballpark uh, idea of what the force versus flow rate relationship is. This is so cool because um, this requires no extra hardware. So this is something I can do straight out of the box, and this is something you can do as well. It requires almost no time, no setup. You just need to preheat your hot end and extrude some filament. Through all the extruder kinematics discussions, we were primarily focused on kind of transient conditions with pressure advance last week. However, with this relationship and this experimental test, we're really going to only be looking at these steady state conditions for filament flow. And the reason for this is because if we tried to measure all of the kind of compensations with pressure advance, we really wouldn't get any valid numbers because there's so much going on. However, once we have these steady state functions and calculations, we can add um, the pressure advance back on top and then try to analytically um, estimate what those uh, filament force versus flow looks like um, under different scenarios. So if you remember this chart from last week, you'll see that the velocity for the extruder has all these transient conditions um, as the tool head is speeding up and the flow rate is increasing, and then uh, conversely when it's, it's slowing down. So by steady state, I mean we're only interested in this kind of central part where the extruder is not changing velocity. Um, so how we do this is we're just going to extrude a bunch of filament um, while the tool head is stationary at a fixed velocity and ignore any of the transient effects. As we set up this experiment, we really need to look at what variables we're looking to solve for and what things we can control. So understandably, we need flow rate, which is fairly easy to calculate from your filament speed, which is a G-code operation. Um, and then we need filament force, which we're going to be calculating based on the stepper motor estimated torque. We can control the speed. Um, what I was using is G1E50F60. Um, and this means that we're going to move the extruder 50 millimeters at a speed of 50 or 60 millimeters per minute, which is one millimeter per second. Uh, for each test, I incremented that um, speed value up by 60 so that I could uh, measure from a filament speed of one millimeters per second all the way up to 12 or whatever the maximum was for the uh, hot end. For the torque variability, we're going to be looking at extruder stepper current because, again, uh, most modern printers have an easy way of uh, changing that current in your TMC driver settings. And so that was another variable we could do. Um, in our model, we're estimating or assuming that the uh, stepper motor torque is basically proportional to the run current versus the rated current. Um, that is an uh, assumption. There, it's not always accurate, but for this purposes, it's, it's a close enough approximation. So let's get to this chart. Um, for each step, as I mentioned, I set an extruder run current, say a 0 0.2 uh, amps, and then I sent a command G1 E50 F60. And if the uh, stepper motor uh, extruded all the filament properly, and I did not hear it audibly slipping or anything like that, or skipping, I would mark the cell green. After this was a, a valid pass test, I would increment up to the next filament speed. In this case, it would be uh, 2, um, so G1 E50, F120. And each step, I'd increase it until I got to a point where I saw some skipping. Um, so in this case, it's fairly easy to tell because the um, extruder motor makes some strange sounds, um, and you can sometimes feel the tool head vibrating. I generally had my hand on the extruder uh, motor or the extruder body. Uh, during this test. Once I found a valley where the extruder motor started skipping, um, I take the last known good value where it didn't skip, 
and record that on uh, my chart. And you can see here this dark green value with no skips um, is the value I chose. Going back to the clipper configuration, changing the run current to 0.3 amps. Um, I have repeated the same process. Um, in this case, I knew that um, you know, I was at least get up to this value, so I would start here and increment up until I, I found that threshold. Each uh, current would get more and more um, filament speed uh, to a certain point where essentially you start hitting a wall because your filament uh, or your hot end cannot melt really filament anymore. Um, so this essentially gives us a curve of filament speed versus extruder run current. Now that we have all this data, which will be unique for your given printer, your given flow rate, your filament and your temperatures, your nozzles, um, then you can calculate the values we want. To do that first though, we need to convert the stepper motor torque to the filament force. And to do this, we need to do some math. On the right here, we have the afterburner clockwork, um, which is essentially a BMG extruder. And so we're gonna use that as an exam example as we're stepping through. First of all, as I mentioned before, we have a stepper motor and uh, based on the data sheet, we have a assumed uh, torque value that is the maximum torque value. Um, for most cases, the torque really isn't in the region uh, for extruders where it starts to fall off due to inductance, but that's something to be aware of as um, you have an extruder with higher and higher gear ratios. And we'll touch on that more in future videos. Um, but for now, we're going to assume that the stepper motor torque is a function of the um, run current versus the rated current times the rated torque. Next, we need to look at the gear ratio. And you can see these two orange uh, circles on the right show the 17 tooth and the 15 tooth gear for the BMG extruder. This ends up being just under a uh, three uh, gear ratio. So this means that any torque that the stepper is outputting gets multiplied by this 2.94 uh, gear ratio so that the, um, the torque at this uh, reference point here is actually significantly higher than the stepper motor itself is outputting. And finally, we can take the rotation distance of our uh, BMG gears. So again, this is gonna vary depending on what extruder you have. Um, in this case, we're using the five millimeter uh, Bontech gears, um, though other extruders may use the eight millimeter version or um, any other type of extruder. Um, from this, in Clipper, we have a really nice parameter called rotation distance, um, which is essentially the amount of filament extruded from one rotation of this gear. Um, and that is defined as the circumference of the kind of filament path. And we can calculate the radius from that really easily. If you think about torque and force, the difference between force and torque is um, essentially a moment arm. And that, uh, in this case, it is the radius here. Because torque is a is kind of a rotational uh, force. And when you apply it with a certain lever arm, you get a, a force in a certain direction. So putting all that together, we have the filament force, um, which is shown by this blue arrow, equals the overall stepper motor torque um, exhibited on this shaft times the gear ratio, which is the relationship between this gear and this larger gear, which has a larger torque on this gear here. And then we have a certain radius that the torque is acting on um, that drives our filament down into the hot end. So since we know all these, we can actually back calculate the filament force given these known variables. So in this chart, I've taken um, the data I've shown earlier, um, all those dark green uh, dots where the maximum flow rate for a given uh, extruder current, um, and we back calculate the filament force and the flow rate from these parameters we just talked about. As you can see, um, these points aren't exactly on this curve, but it's a rough approximation that is good enough for our modeling purposes here. Um, and so this will vary, again, depending on your filament, your print temperatures, your hot end type, um, your nozzle type. There's all these different variables, including uh, what size nozzle you have, because a, a 0.4 millimeter nozzle um, has more resistance than, say, a 0.6 or a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. To double check to make sure that this was you know, kind of valid across different cases, and I didn't just get lucky in one case, I went ahead and did this on two different hot ends. Um, both use the clockwork uh, BMG gears uh, 
um, though one uses an LDO NEMA 17 motor um, and the other uses a um, OMC NEMA 17 motor. So they have slightly different kind of peak torque values and current relationships. You'll see the lines aren't directly on top of each other, um, but in general, they're, they're pretty close. And I would expect them to be fairly close because both of these are, are kind of similar constructions with the Dragon High Flow and the Mellow uh, High Flow Hot Ends. So this Mellow High Flow Hot End has an aluminum block. And so um, you see that the force um, versus flow rate increases a bit higher um, at the high flow rate regions. And I wasn't able to get quite as high peak uh, flow um, just due to that aluminum heater block uh, not holding as much energy or being as efficient as a copper heat block. So next steps for this is to really tie this back in to the um, overall model. And we'll have a really interesting video next week um, where we go over those kind of transient effects and start looking into um, kind of how we can model the hot end um, not only as say a physical like pressure and, and filament force, um, but we can use those um, analogies to even model it like an electrical system with resistors and capacitors and, and current. Um, so stay tuned for next week and I uh, hope you have a, a really good one. Um, if you like this content, feel free to subscribe. Um, I'm really having fun creating these videos and content for you all. Uh, I'm almost creating them more for myself because these questions are, are things that I am curious about and like to answer. Um, so I'm happy that you guys are enjoying it as well. Have a great weekend.